This is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod that adds square tires to the game. The first thing we need to do is decide on a vehicle. We need something with a strong suspension and then a decent bit of ground clearance as well. So let's go with the off-road version of the Roamer. And the funny thing about this is the thumbnail. The vehicle is red, but the default color is blue. I did not change that. You click it and you're going to get a blue vehicle, even though it looks like you're going to get a red one. See, it's blue. Anyways, let's go ahead and equip the square tire. So we got to go to the parts menu. We go to frame and then we go to the rear and front suspension. And then we go to the wheel hub. You want to make sure you have the five lug wheel hubs on this thing because it will not show up if you have the six lug wheels. You need the five lug. So we equip those on the front and the rear and then we go to the wheels itself. And there are a lot of wheels here. If you know the name of the wheel, it's really easy to get to it though because you just type the first few letters of it. And I know the name of the wheel is Conklin. So we type C-O-N-K. And then here are the Conklin wheels. We look for the one that says square tire and we select it. And then we go ahead and do the same thing up here. Go up here, type C-O-N-K, find square tire, and we equipped it. And you'll notice right now, it looks just like a normal wheel on a vehicle and there's no tire on it, even though it says tire. <laughs> it's kind of funny. The wheel is called tire. So what do you call the tire? You call it the square. <laughs> the naming on this is a little funny. The important thing is, is that it works once you equipped it and the parts are in the correct place, so it is easy to find. So there we go. We now have square tires on my vehicle. Now we must try to drive it around some. We're gonna start by driving in automatic mode, which actually makes the drive a lot worse than manual mode unexpectedly. And if you put this thing in slow motion, it's really interesting to see what the tires are actually doing because you'll notice they slow down and speed up all the time. When the corner hits the ground, it kind of stops for a second. And then when the tire is in the air, it speeds up a ton. So it's really, really inconsistent in how fast the tire is actually moving. And it's kind of just interesting to watch it in slow motion because it looks so wacky. Now, let's go ahead and put this thing into manual mode. That way I can upshift it and go a little bit faster. You'll notice though, when you start to go faster, the tires do have a habit of popping if you do any sort of steering. So you want to try to avoid steering if you can. That's not always possible. One thing you definitely want to avoid is braking though, because if you brake hard with these tires, this is what happens. We brake hard, the tires lock up, and they shred themselves. This is also why I said you want something with a strong suspension, because Braking just a little bit does put a lot of stress on the suspension of the vehicle. If you slam on your brakes, it's going to always ruin it. But if you have a strong suspension setup, you can tap the brakes lightly and the vehicle won't get ruined. The right side of the vehicle actually looks fine here. So let's see what happens when we try to drive. Yeah, the wheels are wobbling all over the place. I cannot steer it. It's just going to go in circles forever. This vehicle is officially done. We need to reset it. And one thing that's kind of funny is when you spawn up the vehicle, it starts on the very tip of the wheels and it slowly rolls onto the flat spot. But if you respawn it and then accelerate, it does this really aggressive squat to go onto the wheels. And from behind, it looks even funnier because it looks like it's just ready to race and it's going to launch. It's like three, two, one, go. And then it launches so terribly because it has square wheels that have like no traction at all. So I'm just going to drive around this area some because slow speed maneuvers, it can actually do okay. Although one thing I considered is completely removing the brakes because the brakes are very, very touchy. As you just saw, you can only use about 25% of the brakes before you have issues and you can slow down. All right. By just coasting, you see me going through these corners. The brakes are not being touched. You just let go of the accelerator. It coasts down to 10 miles per hour. Just like that. We could cross the bridge real easy and precisely. And if you plan for the corners, you could slow down for those as well. Really? You don't need the brakes. It just gets you into more trouble than anything. At least it does for me. And speaking of trouble, let's create some trouble by going around a corner really violently. <laughs> Something just shot off. So as you can see, aggressive cornering, even at not that high of speeds, very, very bad idea. And now I think the vehicle is, yeah, it's, it's totally ruined. I can't accelerate anymore. Can we go in reverse at all? Let's see. Nope. We are stuck right there. So we're going to have to wait. It's rolling but it's not going anywhere. So we'll have to reset the vehicle. We start with regular speed driving. Then we went to low speed driving. So how about we do some high speed driving? We're going to see just how fast can we get this vehicle going on a big, long straightaway. And if I'm going the correct direction, we should have a big, long straightaway right around this corner. Assuming I can even get the vehicle through the corner. It was kind of getting a little bit out of control there with the bumps and stuff, but we're good to go. And it's actually sliding around this corner real nicely. Here's the straightaway and full speed ahead. See how fast it can go. Uh Oh, we just lost one of the tires, but we're okay. We still got three more, two more, one more tire. All right. Well, this thing's pretty much done with 
three tires being popped. I have no steering at all. So we just ride along the wall until everything blows to pieces like you see right here. Can we do anything? Uh, yes, we can still move it around with the one tire that remains. That's, that's it. And now we can't anymore. So let's go ahead and try this on a different vehicle. I want something with an automatic transmission though, because I saw the clutch overheating. So we're going to use the 856 TT Sport of the ETK. And on this one, I'm going to go ahead and change the tires and I'll be back once I'm done. Tires have been changed and we're going to put electronic stability control to off because I don't think it'll work well with this vehicle. And we are now good to go. We put it into manual mode so we can still shift the vehicle. We have the automatic transmission so we don't have to worry about the clutch overheating. It should be the perfect vehicle for this. And if we were to believe the speedometer, we're going almost 100 miles per hour, over 100 miles per hour. Although, to be honest, I do not trust the speedometer. It doesn't feel like we're going 100 miles per hour. Uh, one thing I want to see, though, is when we're going this fast, what do the tires look like as they rotate? They actually look a lot smoother when you're going fast. They don't look like they're doing that really jerky motion we saw before. It's still not perfect, but it's a lot better. Anyways, let's go ahead and slam on the brakes and see how badly this thing falls apart from doing that. Although it does have ABS on, which might help. Nope, it did not help. And once the tires start breaking apart, I have no steering, so we were going to hit that wall no matter what I did. There was nothing I could have done except not brake. But I wanted to brake to see how badly the vehicle get torn apart. And the answer is, it will get torn apart very badly. And I do like how sometimes the vehicle just looks like it has Legos attached to it. Like right there, that looks like a Lego that's bouncing around. All right, so I'm going to try this one more time. And on this one, what I want to do is I just want to see how fast can we truly get? Is there an upper limit to the speed you can achieve using this vehicle in the square wheels? I want to find out. First thing we need to do though is get the electronic stability control turned off because it is just messing me up. There you go, electronic stability control is off and we can accelerate so much better now. I mean, electronic stability control works great if you have round tires, but I ain't one of those round tire kind of people. I'm a square tire kind of dude. We have some corners coming up here. I'm breaking very, very lightly to try to slow this thing down. And I'm also steering very, very carefully to make sure I don't pop any of the tires. And so far, this is going very, very well. We made it through the corner. And now we have another huge straightaway right here where we could probably get up to 140 miles per hour readout on the speedometer, which, again, I don't know how much I trust it, but it does feel like we are going about 100 miles per hour at least right now, which I did not expect to be able to do with square wheels. And oh, one popped. Oh, no. Oh, no. Once one tire popped, they all went and it popped because I just steered a little bit too hard at those speeds. When you're going that fast, you have to be very, very careful with your steering inputs. And we got one wheel drive. Yeah, that's great. We're going to get home eventually. And no, we're not. Uh, the only option I have here is just reset it in this spot. Try this on a vehicle where I think it's going to go really, really badly. So far, I was using vehicles that all had all wheel drive because it makes it a heck of a lot easier. Now we're going to use the Autobella Piccolina, which is rear engine, rear wheel drive. And just for the heck of it, let's go at the fastest version possible. And once again, I'll be back once the square wheels are installed. All right. In the rear, we have the default wheels. And then in the front, of course, we have the square ones. I also turned nitrous on and put the car to automatic mode. So we're going to see how that works. And it looks like with only half of the wheels being square, automatic mode works perfectly fine. That's good, good news. And I do trust the speedometer here. We are probably going about 110 miles per hour. It feels like it. And I'm pretty sure the speed is being taken from the much more reliable rear wheels of the vehicle. Now, how does it do going around a corner? Uh, not too bad. In fact, maybe even more controllable than the vehicle is normally. Okay, maybe not that good, but it felt really easy through there. I wonder if you look at the wheel in the front, does it ever look like it rotates in the wrong direction? Let's see. Like, it should be like an illusion. Like, right here, it doesn't look like it's rotating at all or it's rotating in the wrong direction. It's all an illusion of the eyes. It's actually just rotating so fast, your eyes can't keep up with it. Anyways, it's, uh, ooh, jump spot, jump spot. How do the wheels do here? Oh, that's not good. One of the wheels flew off. The other one is still attached. I like seeing it fly through the air. It looks like a dangerous weapon flying through the air, but it's just a square tire. <laughs> There goes the exhaust to give me that little extra boost in the air to get that extra air time to fly in between the trees without hitting any of them. Nope, we hit one of them. I really didn't expect to not hit any of them, but there was a small possibility of that happening. It did not happen though. So anyways, here is a look at the damage at the vehicle after that impact. That thing has been thoroughly, thoroughly ruined. So we're going to go ahead and try a couple more tests. The first thing I want to do is I want to go to a map with some off-roading. So I'm going to head over to the Tough Trucks map. 
Okay, the vehicle is set up and ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the differentials for that extra traction. And let's try driving this thing. Apparently the hardest part is gonna be turning left right here. Can it make it? Yes, it can, but we're gonna go right off the road anyways. I wanna try to climb these rocks right here. This is something the normal D35 beast can do all day, every day. Square wheel one, uh, not so much. We have just lost the front drive shaft and one of the wheels. I don't think it's gonna make it. Can we even get off of it? Barely, we can barely get off of it. So let's lower the stakes a little bit. There's a smaller grouping over here that we could try to climb up. This, it better not get stuck on. You better be able to go over that because you're the D35 beast and there we go. I mean, still deflated the tire somehow, but it at least made it over. All right, how about this? We're gonna hit the jump a little bit and get some air and actually the tires held up. I thought for sure it was gonna have some sort of tire explosion right there, but I guess hitting them front to back like that, they're actually pretty durable. The problem is when you hit them side to side, they just have no strength in the side of the tire. So like steering like this, that puts a lot of pressure on the side of it. And that's what causes them to pop so frequently, I guess. All right, let's try to make our way over to the mud section and see what it does through there. I assume it's gonna get stuck instantly considering how much it's struggled so far, but maybe the square tires will surprise me, I don't know. The clutch is overheating as well, that's not so good. So what I'll do is I'll line it up here and I'll just reset it so we have all the tires working. Good clutch, well, three of the tires working because the other one decided to burst already. And how well does it do in the mud? We need to keep it in first gear. Ooh, no, this is bad. The tires get stuck in the mud and then they shred themselves, it looks like. I mean, it's making it a bit, but now the front drive shaft is broken and there goes all of my momentum. This thing is dead in the mud now. So overall, this vehicle, not good with square tires. Not good at all. Most vehicles, no, not even most. All vehicles, not that great with square tires. But if you do half and half, it's not that bad. So why don't we try half and half again on this one? And last time I did good tires in the rear, so this time we'll do good tires in the front of the vehicle. So it's the exact opposite, although we're testing for off-roading, so it really doesn't matter that much, does it? And which tires? I don't care. Give me the 15.9 classic front steel wheel. That's perfect. I don't even need off-road tires or tires that are designed for this vehicle. I just want something that are round. I want to see can it off-road better or worse like this. And so far, no tires have popped, so my initial guess is it's doing better. We also do not have the differentials locked, which could help a little bit if necessary. So far, it has not been necessary. All right, now we're stuck locking the differentials a little bit to give us a little bit extra help. Can we get over that bump? That's going to be a challenge. Come on. No, nope, just flooring it is not going to make, maybe make it? For a second, it looked like it had a shot and then it just gave up. That is a surprisingly steep area that it can go over, mostly. Like, it is a, a very, very difficult thing for the truck to do, but it can do it. And then we've lost, well, half of the wheels pretty much, so that's as far as we're gonna really get with this thing. I, I gotta try this same setup on a racetrack. So let's go ahead and head over to, you know, I was gonna do Hirochi Raceway, cause that's where I always go, but you know what? There's also a racetrack at West Coast USA, so let's try it out there. Okay, setup is complete, and in addition to changing the rear wheels, I also removed the brakes in the rear, so I should be able to brake without the vehicle ruining itself because all the braking is going to be happening with the front of the vehicle. Alright, and initial impressions. Let's see, how does this drive? The rear end really wants to slide out on you. It wants to drive super crooked, and I have to do a lot of work just to keep this thing in a straight line, basically. And if I don't keep it straight enough, it's just going to brake itself like that. This thing is now officially broken and we already got to reset it to try again. And I actually have no idea how this thing is going to corner. It looks like if I want to go left, I have to steer right because it slides so much. That's great. All right, how is the braking though? Can it at least brake okay? Yeah, it looks like it. The problem is, is when I started to brake, you saw the back end start to tip outwards. If it slides too much, again, the suspension is going to all fall apart. So we still got to be very careful with the braking but less so than if we had brakes in both the front and the rear, I would think. And up oh, right there, that just killed the suspension. That makes me lose stability, and this thing's gone. I can't do much at all with this. It's just gonna lose control eventually. Yep, bye. That is the end of that car. It's not gonna be going anywhere. And I think that's about gonna do it for this video. So until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by looking at the shape of the tires. So do the right thing and I'll see you next time.